fire exits right here and the two in the back of the room. Would the clerk please read the notice of public hearing? Notice of public hearing of the Orange County Legislature. Pursuant to New York State Town Law Section 73, alteration of town boundaries with respect to a petition for the division of the town of Monroe to create the new town of Palm Tree or other suitable name identified by the Orange County Legislature and the town of Monroe. Notice is hereby given that the Orange County Legislature will hold a public hearing for the purposes of soliciting public comments on Tuesday, August 15, 2017 at 6.30 p.m. at the Central Valley Elementary School Auditorium, 45 Route 32, Central Valley, New York, 10917, and continuing thereafter on Wednesday, August 16, 2017 at 6.30 p.m. at the Bias Rachel Paradise Hall, 5 Israel Zuffnick Drive, Monroe, New York, 10950. With respect to a town law Article 5 petition for division of the town of Monroe, County of Orange, New York, to create the new town of Palm Tree or other suitable name identified by the county legislature in the town of Monroe, filed with the clerk of the Orange County Legislature on September 12, 2016, and an amendment thereof filed with the clerk of the Orange County Legislature on July 10, 2017, changing the name of the proposed new town to the town of Palm Tree and revising the legal common boundary description and map by reducing the acreage of land, all of which are available on the Orange County website at www.orangecountygov.com. Exhibit A, the town of Palm Tree common boundary description. Preamble, the new town of Palm Tree boundary description incorporates all of the village of Carriage Joel in its entirety and assumes that the parcels and land area as part of the recently approved 164 acre annexation of unincorporated town of Monroe into the village of Kiris Joel are currently a legal part of the village of Kiris Joel. Thus, the proposed town of Palm Tree would consist of this new amended Kiris Joel boundary described in recent annexation documents, plus the area from the 27 parcels listed in the attached table in addition to road area. Generally, these parcels are located in the northeastern portion of the town of Monroe, north of New York State Route 17, west and southwest of the village of Kiris Joel, as depicted on the attached map. The acreage of the parcels and adjacent road area is approximately 56 plus or minus acres. The new town of Palm Tree acreage will include these 56 plus or minus acres plus the 889 plus or minus acres currently a part of the village of Kiris Joel. The total acreage of the new town of Palm Tree will be 945 plus or minus acres. Written comments on the petition will be accepted through close of business Thursday, August 17, 2017, and directed to Jean M. Rampin, clerk of the Orange County. Copies of the petition for the division and exhibits are available for inspection during usual business hours at the office of the clerk of said county legislature, 15 Matthew Street, Suite 203, Goshen, New York, 10924, and on the Orange County website at www.orangecountygov.com. This notice was published in the July 24th, July 31st, August 7th, and August 14th issues of the Times-Herald Record at the direction of a town clerk of the town of Monroe. Also, notice of public hearing regarding environmental assessment review of the proposed division of the town of Monroe to create the new town of Palm Tree and the town of Monroe pursuant to town law article 5. Notice is hereby given that the Orange County Legislature will hold a public hearing for the purposes of soliciting public comments on Tuesday, August 15, 2017, at 6.30 p.m. at Central Valley Elementary School Auditorium, 45 Route 32, Central Valley, New York, 10917, and continuing thereafter on Wednesday, August 16, 2017, at 6.30 p.m. at the Bias Rachel Paradise Hall, 5 Israel Zuffnick Drive, Monroe, New York, 10950. With respect to the environmental assessment review of a petition pursuant to town law, Article 5, for the division of the town of Monroe to create the new town of Palm Tree or other suitable name identified by the county legislature and the town of Monroe under consideration by the Orange County Legislature. The petition was filed with the clerk of the Orange County Legislature on September 12, 2016, and an amendment thereto was filed with the clerk on July 10, 2017 changing the name of the proposed new town to the town of Palm Tree and revising the legal common boundary description and map 
by reducing the acreage of land from 382 plus or minus acres plus the village of Kiris Joel as it existed at the time of the filing of the petition on September 12, 2016 to 56 plus or minus acres plus the village of Kiris Joel inclusive of 164 plus or minus acres of approved annex lands. Written comments on the environmental assessment form will be accepted through close of business Thursday, August 17, 2017 and should be directed to David E. Church, AICP, Orange County Commissioner of Planning, Department of Planning, 1887 County Building, 124 Main Street, Goshen, New York, 10924, or by email to www.dchurch at orangecountygov.com. Further notice is hereby given that original documents, petition for division, exhibits, amendments, maps, and the full environmental assessment form are available for inspection during usual business hours at the office of the clerk of the said county legislature, 15 Matthew Street, Suite 203, Goshen, New York, 10924, and copies thereof are available on the Orange County website at www.orangecountygov.com. This notice was published in the August 9th issues of the Hudson Valley Press, Walk Hill Valley and Mid-Hudson Times, and the August 11th issues of the Orange County Post, Warwick Advertiser, Monroe Photo News, The Chronicle, The News of the Highlands, The Formal Local, and The Gazette. Thank you, Jean. Uh, the clerk will dispense with the reading of the boundary description that will be taken up by Commissioner of Planning David Church in a few minutes. Good evening, my name is L. Stephen Brescia, Chairman of the Orange County Legislature from District 9. I would like to welcome you to the public hearing on the petition for the division of the town of Monroe to create the new town of Palm Tree or any other name, suitable name identified by the Orange County Legislature as the town of Monroe. The legislature will hear public comment, excuse me, public comment tonight, and we will continue the public hearing tomorrow night at 6:30 at the Vice Rachel. Am I saying this right? I hope. Vice Rachel Paradise Hall, 5 Israel Zuffnick Drive, and Monroe. And we will gladly accept written comments before the close of business, business on Thursday, August 17, 2017. I just want to say that uh, the public will be introduced by the clerk in twos. Please give your name and the town from which you reside at the time when you come up to speak. And we are going to strict, sick, and we talk tonight, stick to the three minute rule. We're not going to have the grace period where we occasionally have at the uh, regular monthly meetings. Because there's a lot of speakers wanting to say the piece tonight. And please try to uh, stick to the subject matter on the, uh, the vote for the referendum that we're going to allow or not allow on our September 7th vote. Let's not get off on any sidetracks, please. Okay, I'll introduce the uh, clerk of the Orange County, or excuse me, the attorney for the Orange County Legislature, Antoinette Gluzak. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you all for coming this evening. Uh, I'll just briefly go over the petition uh, with you uh, to describe um, and the process uh, as, as to how we got to where we are today. Uh, I will just note that the public hearing today is only with respect to the petition that was filed with the Orange County Legislature. This public hearing has nothing to do with any agreements, settlement agreements between Preserve Hudson Valley, United Monroe, and Kiris Joel. If you want information regarding that settlement agreement, I urge you to uh, look at uh, United Monroe's Facebook account um, and or speak with Emily Convers, uh, John Allegro, or Mr. Michael Egan. Uh, thank you. Uh, so just an overview of the petition. Uh, the petition for the division of the town of Monroe County of Orange, New York, uh, pursuant to town law article 5 to create a new town and town of Monroe was filed with the clerk of the Orange County Legislature on September 12, 2016, and an, an amendment thereof was filed on July 10, 2017, requesting to change the name of the proposed new town to the town of Palm Tree and revising the legal common boundary description and map by reducing the acreage of land. The documents are available on the Orange County website. The petition purports to be signed by quali duly qualified electors of the Town of Monroe, Orange County, New York, representing not less than 5% of the total votes cast for governor in the town at the last general election of state offices. The petition is comprised of 183 pages containing a total of approximately 2,420 signatures. The petition had the following exhibits attached to it. 
Exhibit A and B were the meets and bounds description and a map depicting the new town of Palm Tree. Exhibit C, uh, C was the statement of indebtedness for the town of Monroe for the fiscal year ending December 31, 2014, as certified by Town of Monroe Chief Fiscal Officer Peter Martin. Exhibit D was the statement of reasons for change to separate the village of Kearse Joel and its immediate vicinities of 56 plus or minus, plus or minus acres from the town of Monroe uh, to establish a new town of palm tree, so as to allow both communities to separately coexist based upon cultural and family lifestyles, educational institutions, community facilities, and infrastructure needs, political and governmental autonomy. In accordance with New York State law, the Orange County Commissioners for the Board of Elections calculated that the petition required the signatures of 541 qualified electors of the town of Monroe to be valid. No specific or general objections were filed to the petition, but for a letter dated October 6, 2016, by the law firm Zarin and Steinmans, representing Preserve Hudson Valley. On October 11, 2016, the clerk of the legislature issued a certificate of the filing of the petition, which was posted on the Orange County website. On July 20th, 2017, the clerk of the legislature received a letter uh, from petitioner's agent, Gedalia Segedin, amending the petition by withdrawing exhibits A, the legal description, and B, the map outlining the boundaries of the division of the lands from the town of Monroe, um, uh, so that it would be comprised of the village of Kearse Joel, inclusive of the approved annexed 164 plus or minus acres of land and an additional 56 plus or minus acres. Agent, uh, Agent Segnan also requested the name of the new town to be Town of Palm Tree and remove the name of Town of North Monroe. Uh, on May 15, 2017, petitioner's agent submitted part one of a full environmental assessment form, along with a letter from the law firm of Whiteman, Osterman, and Hanna, LLP, stating in quotes, it is the petitioner's position that the county legislature's determination on the Article 5 petition allowing the proposition to go to the electorate for a vote on confirmation is not an action subject to review under the State Environmental Quality Review Act. On June 1st, 2017, by resolution number 123 of 2017, this legislature preliminarily typed the action as an unlisted action under Seeker and requested the Orange County Commissioner of Planning to review part one of the full EAF prepared by the, by the petitioners and to prepare part two and a draft part three of the form for review and consideration by the Rules Committee at its June 21st, 2017 meeting. Commissioner Church revised the EAF in accordance with the amended petition and submitted that document to the clerk of the legislature on August 2nd, 2017. The full FEIF is available for public viewing on the Orange County website. Notice of this public hearing regarding the EAF was published in the Orange County official newspapers as reported by the clerk. The Orange County legislature is in receipt of a letter dated August 11, 2017 by Richard B. Golden, Esquire, and a, an attorney writing on behalf of a local municipal group opposing the Kearse jo Joel annexation, informing the legislature of the importance of conducting a thorough environmental review prior to the legislature's decision on the pending petition to form the new town of Palm Tree, and requesting that each of the participating municipalities be listed as an interested agency. Resolution number 124 of 2017 set this public hearing. In accordance with town law section 73, the clerk of the town of Monroe caused publication of the notice of this public hearing in the Times Herald record as reported by the clerk of the legislature. All public hearing comments, correspondence, and documents will be considered by all legislators at the Rules Enactments and in Intergovernmental Relations meeting on August 23rd, 2017. 
That meeting will be held at the Orange County Emergency Operations Center, 22 Wells Farm Road, Goshen, New York, at approximately 3.30 p.m. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Next up, I'd like to introduce David Church, Commissioner of Planning for the County of Orange, for an overview of the map and the environmental review. Uh, welcome everybody this evening. Uh, a quick overview, my name is David Church, I'm the Commissioner of Planning in Orange County. Uh, my office is providing technical assistance to the legislature in the review of this uh, proposed action. Um, as proposed, the Town of Palm Tree and their maps available in print format that we can get more to people if they're law, if they're gone now. There's also one on the board in front of the table here and one in the lobby. Um, and the petition is proposed for the new town includes the entire existing village of Curious Jaw, um, which for legal purposes and clarity now does include 164 acres of annex property, plus or minus. Um, so the, the current proposal for the new town is the existing village plus 56 acres approximately, and that's shown by the yellow parcels outlined on the map. Uh, to clarify some confusion, uh, in the far eastern portion of the proposal, there is a strip of land. Um, that strip of land the petitioner saw as necessary uh, to ensure that lands remaining in the existing town of Monroe stay contiguous. Uh, so that makes a connection to some existing acreage. Uh, that map is also available, as was noted earlier, on the, uh, directly on the county homepage, attached to the public notices uh, for both hearings tonight and tomorrow. Uh, additionally, the county is treating uh, this proposed action as what we call an unlisted action uh, for environmental review under the State Environmental Quality Review Act. Um, we prepared a draft full environmental assessment form. It's approximately 30-some pages with some additional approximately 16-page narrative. Um, that's in draft form uh, for review and comment, both online and available at the office, as mentioned earlier by the clerk. Um, to highlight some of the potential impacts that we've identified um, related to the town, they include uh, the potential impact to the county-owned and operated Gonzaga Park, um, potential impacts to the Long Path, uh, long-range regional walking trail, um, potential impacts to an unnamed tributary of the Ramapo River, which comes out of the village of Curious Joel currently, um, as well as a series of what we call growth-inducing impacts associated with services and infrastructure, notably the provision of water and sewer service. And thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, before I defer to the clerk, I'll introduce the county exec to say a few words, Stephen M. Newhouse. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's good to see a strong uh, showing of uh, support from the community out there for and against this. Uh, what we're talking about tonight is really one issue. Whether the county legislature should approve a resolution to let the voters of the town of Monroe decide on this referendum. That's the decision tonight. I was born and raised, I lived over half of my life in Monroe. I actually went to school in this school here when it was middle school not too long ago. And uh, I want to talk about a couple of quick things, because I know the time is ticking. The process. I heard some complaints about the process. There was a couple of legislators, Myrna Chemnitz, uh, Katie Benelli, and Mike Amo, as well as the chairman involved in this process. Those three legislators represent this area. Then on the other side, I went to two meetings uh, total for this. Was the Village of Curious Shorell representatives in United Monroe. What was the alternative? Having Harley Knowles negotiate on behalf of the town? That's like, you know, the decision would have been made by itself. So that's the end of the process part. Here's what I think are the advantages. Number one, it gives the rest of the town of Monroe a chance to recalibrate, beef up its zoning, work on getting some open space money to preserve and make buffers, which haven't been done in Monroe, Lonely Grove, or Woodbury. That would help preserve the southern part of Marge County. The other thing it would allow us to do, it would remove the voting block. For over decades, the voting block has controlled the town of Monroe board, allowing the zoning to be ignored and ignored to where we are today. It's a political Chernobyl 
that's spewing over the borders to the other nearby towns. Where we are, where we are, you see Worldly Heights and Blooming Grove. You see what's going on here in Woodbury. What are the alternatives? We're going to allow the state of New York and Washington D.C. to work and, and support us. They haven't. Where's the DEC been on this? Then you also have continued lawsuits. The only people I've seen that have made down over the last 20 years are lawyers. Are we better off now with what's going on in the village of Kirishawell and what's going on where we are today? We have, it's gotten worse and worse, folks. Then you talk about United Monroe. United Monroe, whether you criticize them or not, they've shown the way to at least sit down and get something done. Might not be perfect, but it's a first step. It's a lesson to nearby towns and villages to do the same thing. You want an agreement to protect your towns, sit down, negotiate it. And then the last thing, because I know I'm running out of time, Ronald Reagan said, trust but verify. In November, I believe I see out there Tony, I think Tony Carter will be the next town supervisor in the town of Monroe. Agree on this, Tony. You and Mike McGinn, who beat that curve of being controlled by the block go code, you guys can come out and say, "Let's kick this and let's let's defeat this ballot measure." That's what we're talking about here, folks. I don't need any notes. I got a couple bullet marks, and I know this is put this issue like the back of my hand. We have an opportunity today, legislators. I think you guys have handled this well, and uh, I wish you luck on your decision. Thank you. at a time, three minutes. When you get to the three minute mark, I'm going to say next speaker. So please stop for three minutes, okay? You need the microphone? Because I drive the bus tonight, now I got some other stuff. Point of order? Oh, introduce legislators. Okay, I'm sorry. James O'Donnell from the town of Goshen, Paul Roskevich from the Pine Island area, Curly Diller from the city of Newburgh, Barry Cheney from the town of Warwick, village of Warwick as well, John Vero from the village of Chester and represents Warwick as well, Matt Turnbull, the minority leader, Kevin Hines from Farmwall, Tom Pagione from, Port, uh, from Deer Park and Port Jervis, uh, Chris Ekes from New Windsor, Lee Benton from the town of Newburgh, Mike and Agnes Stockis from the town of Newburgh, I didn't know you had your groupies here tonight. <laughs> Jeff Kirkman from the city of Middletown. Michael Amo from District 1, uh, Monroe, or the town of Monroe. Katie Benelli from the town of Bloomingrove, Grove. Jim DeSalvo from the town of Highlands. And Myrna Kemnitz from the town of Monroe. Okay, Jean, turn it over to you. The next speaker will be Michael Egan, followed by Michael Sussman. I'm uh, Michael Egan. Uh, thanks for uh, holding this hearing. Many of you I've met. Those who I haven't met yet, I look forward to doing so. I've lived in this town of Monroe for 35 years, raised three kids, all went through this uh, school district, had a great experience, and uh, proof of that is they're all on their own, living on their own. Um, town of Monroe needs your help. Town of Monroe has a problem that no other town in this county has. And that is, it has 26,000 residents living in a village that aspires to uh, urban style living, high density housing, heavy use of resources, and sends their kids to private school. Everybody else, virtually everybody else, the other 22,000 people in the town, aspire to basically the opposite uh, quality of life. They want, uh, they moved here for uh, suburban living, semi rural living big believers in public schools. Uh, this uh, dichotomy has resulted in a struggle for the town board, town government, because the town government controls those resources, controls approving annexations, controls zoning, controls money, tax money, so on and so forth. And that struggle has led to dysfunction in this town. While other towns have pro progress, and we look around and we see good things happening in other places, open space movements. We can't do that in this town because it's a struggle and it's a stalemate. The solution is at hand, it's palm tree. Separation equals independence, the curious goal, so it can go uh, pursue its destiny 
and for the rest of the town of Monroe so that it can uh, pursue its destiny, stop fighting, put the energy into progress, into creating opportunity and jobs and hope uh, and move forward. In 1990, this school district did exactly what we wanted to do. That is the model. They separated from the Village of Curious Joe because they knew that they were going to have this very problem. And you know what? You won't find a person in this room who doesn't say, thank God they did, because if they didn't do that, we would be East Ramapo. So we're asking you to do the same thing, do it again, save the school district again, and save the town. So on behalf of the thousands of residents of the town who have worked for five years, five years to get to this point and tee up the separation, rebuild their town, save their school district, move forward, I ask this legislature to vote yes, pass it down to the citizens of Monroe to vote on in a town-wide referendum. Thank you. Good evening, Michael Sussman from Chester. I'm here tonight as a constitutional lawyer who spent nearly 40 years practicing and studying constitutional law. I represented dissidents in Curious Joel between 1990 and 2011 in all told struggles for more than 20 years. In 1997, a federal judge asked me whether my clients wanted an order dissolving the village of Curious Joel because the proofs before him so clearly established that the village of Curious Joel was a theocracy. That is a government controlled by a majority religious faction and its grand rabbi, and antithetical both to anyone else, particularly those sodomars who did not accept one anointed successor to Grand Rabbi Joel's authority. Creating a village or town for a particular religious group violates one of the most fundamental principles which binds us, the establishment clause of the First Amendment. Creating a new religious town echoes the terrible precedent set 40 years ago when the village was carved out of the town of Monroe, to wit, that the state may and should create separate juridical subdivisions on the basis of religion or race or any other such characteristic. When I say precedent, I mean this. Next year, African Americans from Newburgh, Latinos from Middletown, could assert their preference, or perhaps their right, based on this example, to set up a separate community where they have hegemony. Perhaps white families, concerned about increasing minority population in some area of our county, could petition their own for their own community. This factionalization is precisely what our founders railed against in the Federalist Papers and indeed explains why the Establishment Clause exists. I have no doubt that the parties to this agreement under discussion and this particular referendum have reasons for separation. We just heard some of them. But these preferences, however valid, countervail our constitutional order and all hope for an integrated future in which each person, man, woman, child, is valued for who she is, not primarily identified by religion or race. And that, make no mistake, mistake about it, is the American dream we can share. Tonight, we must promote several things. Curious Joel yeshivas follow education law and provide three hours of secular education for their students. Their young must be exposed to and allowed to understand the broader ways of life of their neighbors and fellow residents. Curious Joel's neighbors recognize the town of Monroe may have a religious minority, majority, but that does not foreclose dialogue, coexistence, and does not justify a further sanctioning of state-created separation. And that the new town should not be created, because doing so establishes a state religion in a state-sponsored, state-created jurisdiction, which is blatantly unconstitutional. Thank you. Just so you know, we do have two microphones at either side of the auditorium, so whatever, I, whatever one is convenient, please use that. Um, the next speaker is John Salka, followed by Elsie Rodriguez. Hello, my name is John Salka. I'm a 35-year resident of the town of Lumi Grove. I'm a member of the group Preserve Lumi Grove, and I'm here to enthusiastically urge the Orange County legislator to vote yes to allow the people of Monroe 
to vote on their own political future. Let them vote. The next speaker after Elsie Rodriguez is Jonathan Chait. Good evening, my name is Elsie Rodriguez and I'm the Superintendent of Schools for the Monroe Woodbury Central School District. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak. For the past several years, the school district has been analyzing the potential short and long-term impacts of the annexation of land to the village of Curious Joel. Initially, our study was surrounding two scenarios, one that considered 164 acres and another that considered 507 acres. In recent weeks, we've been asked to gather relevant data as it relates to another scenario, 164 acres with an additional 56 acres to create a new town of palm tree. The essential question is if the district should continue the course of action established in the early 1990s of maintaining the coterminous boundaries between the municipality and the school district. Please know that the school district is committed to doing what is best for our students and taxpayers. The Board of Education will be making a final decision when we are confident that we have done our due diligence. My responsibility as superintendent of schools is to always put our students first and families. And that is what I do each and every day. I believe that our community expects the school district to consider all the factors before making a formal recommendation about whether to move boundary lines. At a special board meeting tomorrow night, we will update the members of the Board of Education with the most recent findings. This issue will be discussed at the regular Board of Education meeting scheduled for Wednesday, August 23rd, with public comment. Clear and concise information is critical moving forward, and for that reason, the district has a boundary line alteration page on our website with the most recent correspondence related to this issue. Rest assured, the district's focus has been and continues to be the students we serve and the taxpayers who live in our district. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, legislators, members of the administration, fellow citizens. My name is Jonathan Chase. I've lived in the town of Cornwall since 2006. And I'm here to join Mr. Sussman in striking a blow for the United States Constitution. We should all be ever mindful of doing things the right way, not necessarily the most expedient way. I speak from the experience of having represented the petitioners in the village election case in 2014 in, in Bloomingburg, where uh, after village boundaries were moved, a, a Fraud, a fraud was committed in a village election that has resulted in the guilty police and the impending sentences of several people that were involved with that and with the project that was involved with that village boundary movement. So moving boundaries began a nightmare in Bloomingburg, which continues to this day and which has had irrevocable consequences. So it, what may look easy and, and slick and easy to do may be the beginning of another legal nightmare that may have far-reaching implications. The First Amendment, as Mr. Sussman noted, pro prohib prohibits the, respect the respecting and establishment of religion. That's any religion. You can't make a jurisdictional boundary to favor a religion. You just can't do it. It's unconstitutional, however convenient it may be. So the Pilgrims, the Puritans, the Quakers, the Amish, they came to this country to escape religious control of governments, not to come and make deals to create them. So it, this, this, the very name of Town of Palm Tree overtly suggests that this is being tailored for a religious group. And yet the county executive in his remarks a moment ago quite clearly stated that although only the citizens of the town of Monroe will vote on this re referendum that you're about to decide whether they may, that he, and quoting him, said that this will create a political Chernobyl spewing over the borders to neighboring towns. By the way, neighboring towns who will have no vote in this referendum. No say in the matter. That's right. So, um, this is, uh, I respectfully submit that, this, that this, uh, this whole concept is an unconstitutional violation of the Establishment Clause, and it is, the question facing you as legislators is not whether this is something that you can do, it's whether you, it's something that you should do. 
even, uh, even putting aside the constitutional question. I, I urge you to vote in the negative. Thank you. Good evening, Mike Goldstein. Good evening, Mike Goldstein, the town of Monroe. In 1905, the philosopher George Santayana wrote, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. On September 30, 1938, the Prime Minister of England, after meeting for the third time in Germany, declared, my good friends, this is the second time there has been come back from Germany to Downing Street. Peace with honor. I believe it is peace for our time. <clears throat> Monroe's own incarnate of Neville, Cam uh, of Neville Chamberlain has spewed similar remarks at town board meetings about this deal. In 1938, Czechoslovakia was not consulted about the land they were to cede to Germany to reach a peace accord. Do you note the similarity of what's going on now and what happened in the past? How is this any different than what happened in 1938? Will the other municipalities that are involved in lawsuits over the KJ annexation ever consulted? I do not think so. Did Monroe's town board, led by three members elected by United Monroe and the KJ Alliance, ever discuss their lack of attendance at these negotiations? The answer is no. How many members of the Orange County Legislature know all of the details of the proposed new town? The ramifications of the creation of new town have far-reaching implications for all of Orange County, not just Monroe. Until all of the ramifications about this issue are understood, I urge you to not put the issue on the ballot this November. There should not be another piece of legislation we have to vote for to find out all of the details in the agreement and its implications for the town of Monroe and, and Orange County. Uh, and I'll stop it here. I don't want to get too political. Thank you. Following Nancy Bryan is Christine Tucker, followed by Lorraine Loney. Nancy Bryan, Town of Cornwall. The issue of resources, specifically water, is primary on my mind. I am not here to dispute the pros and cons of creating a new town, unless the new town has sucked the life out of someone else's water supply. I have yet to see in any of the published documents explaining where the new town will be getting its water from and where the wastewater will be going. What exactly are those plans, and where might anyone find those documents? If I was voting on this, I would want to know that. When I raised this question on social media, the response was less than pleasant, and that's an understatement. The water issue is primary in my mind. While the Monroe folks might like what they think they have achieved, those of us down the road need guarantees that our water supply won't be gone. I'm speaking more specifically about the well in Mountainville. I go back to the 2015 hearing about the well. I read the permit application required by the DEC in its entirety prior to that meeting. It was too easy for even me, a non-expert, to see the lies, that, like not taking the ecosystem of the Moodna into consideration and to not question the drawdown test. 24 hours, not 72, which I found out was the industry standard, in which during the 24 hours of the well test, people in Mountainville experienced greatly diminished capacity from their wells and found out why afterwards. Yet the DEC granted permission for this well. The pro-annexation group doesn't seem to want this brought up. If that well is activated and used to capacity, and who knows, maybe beyond the 620,000 gallons a day, people in Mountainville across Route 32, at the very least, will have no water. Beyond that, people in the Angola Road and Mineral Springs area will probably also see no water as the aquifer is drawn down. And those of us on Quaker Avenue who rely on a well might also be affected as we are all on the same aquifer. Then what? We have the right to have water and to not have our properties rendered useless and uninhabitable due to someone else's greed. There are no water mains out there. Properties will have zero value. Maybe for several thousand dollars, water might be available. For those of us close to water mains, who pays the cost to connect? 
and who bears the cost of paying for municipal water each month when we never had to. Many people do not realize just how much of the Cornwall Mountainville area is actually on well water. From just past the start of Angola Road in town, the municipal water system ends. Mountainville residents have always relied on their wells. So my dear legislators, I would hope that the water question is answered to the satisfaction of everyone, particularly those of us who live north of here. I would hope that just like groups in Monroe who insist on guarantees on both sides, everyone realizes the rights of those of us to continue our lives as we know it, to continue to live with our properties maintaining their value, and to continue to have our water supply remain available to us as it has been for in excess of 150 years is as important as any other issue here. Without guarantees to all of us, the folks in the North, that our water won't be taken from us, thereby decimating us, so that a new community can be built on the hardships of those in Mountainville and Cornwall, I ask that you not vote yes without knowing that the water supply and oh yes, the wastewater will not have a negative and earth shattering effect on others. No one has the right to take from others so that they may flourish. Thank you. Good evening. I am requesting that Orange County Legislator vote no to having the request for a new town be on the November 2017 ballot. Why not wait until all the impacts are revealed and then vote? The impact to Monroe and Orange County have yet to be determined financially and environmentally, inclusive of other aspects to the residents as information comes to light to the town of Monroe will be losing revenue through property taxes and additional revenue to the tune of $1.7 million and 880000 estimated for Monroe Woodbury Central School District, with financial numbers consistently changing. As building occurs, astronomical revenue will be lost to the town of Monroe. The agreement between UM, PHV, and KJ was not agreed to by the town of Monroe government, but by a political group that does not represent me. Political agreements cannot supersede New York State annexation laws, which are guaranteed by the state laws and cannot be taken away by political agreements. The full environmental assessment form lacks information pertaining to the properties. In the section for new demand for water, where the applicant describes the extensions or capacity expansions pr proposed to serve this project, the answer is unknown, but village water district service area likely to be expanded to include the new town and water supply lines constructed as needed. But there have been numerous articles that KJ runs out of water. On the FEIS, when asked about liquid waste, totally anticipated liquid waste generation per day, 130,800 gallons per day. The applicant answers no to, is the expansion of the district needed? I don't see how you can move so much property into a new town boundary and not have expansion. But on um, describe extension or capacity expansions proposed. At this time, existing sewer lines serve the project area, and Orange County Department of Public Works confirms the capacity exists for new residential development on first come, first served basis. Should Palm Tree form their own sewer district and water supply? Should they have the ability to issue sewer permits currently done by Orange County, thus regulating the marketplace? What effect will this have on anyone wishing to build anywhere else? Unless KJ slash Palm Tree gives the approval, Orange County always had this power. I see no reason to rush into creating a new town without giving all residents and surrounding communities all the information on the impacts to their community and Orange County. The request for a new town is serious. It has not been done in 100 years. Why? All impacts should be revealed before it goes on a ballot for the community to decide. No one can make a decision, no one can make an informed decision when the request lacks all the information to make an informed decision from. Thank you, next speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Following the rain loading is Diane Egan, followed by Greg Tucker. Good evening, rain loading town of Monroe. I'm asking the Orange County legislators to slow down this process and not put the creation of the town of Palm Tree on the ballot this November. This might be a great deal, a bad deal, or the best deal you can hope to get, but I don't know, as there are a few, if any, details about what will happen to those that remain in the town of Monroe or the Monroe Berry School District after the creation of Palm Tree. 
I feel that regardless of what those details are, once the initiative is on the ballot, the two groups that agree to the accord will mobilize their block votes and the referendum will be destined to pass. Before it goes to ballot, I am urging you to find out answers, ask questions. Do school boundaries move merely as an agreement of the Monroe Road School District, KDA School District, and BOCES, or could some entity at the state level put the squish on this? What is the increased financial burden to those remaining in the town of Monroe and the Monroe Road Road School District? And if there's no increase in the burden, then can we expect a decrease in services from the town and less of the breadth of programming, electives, and extracurricular activities that make for a meaningful school experience? And this doesn't even start to address environmental impacts. And while these impacts will be felt in the town of Monroe and the middle of the Berry School District first, make no mistake that eventually it's going to impact Middletown and Deer Park and Montgomery and the whole rest of the county. County taxes are going to rise as services are provided to the rapidly growing KJ community. Don't you want to know that number, what they're providing, how much it's going to cost now, five years from now, ten years, and out? Don't you want to know how much this is going to cost your constituents? I want to know if I'm one of your constituents. So I am asking you to get answers to these questions before you consider putting it on the ballot. And that could be in November or call a special election. This is really important, and I'm asking you to do it right, not fast. Following Diane Egan is Tom Chemnitz. Can you hear me? Yeah, you've got to speak into the mic. I think it's okay to speak into it. Okay. Close enough. All right. Uh, Chairman Resha, members of the Orange County Legislature. My name is Diane Egan. I'm a resident of the town of Monroe, and I have been for the past 36 years. I raised my children here. They all attended the Monroe Woodbury School District. Proud graduates who are proud Monroe residents. This is my hometown. It was a wonderful place to raise children, but I'm thinking of the future, not the past. We have a problem here in Monroe. Um, and I'm asking the Orange County Legislature to vote yes on separation and let Monroe of the past have a future. That's really what this is about. Over the past five years, I've become involved in the political struggles of Monroe. As an advocate for causes and candidates, one of the most common refrains from longtime neighbors and residents is, why bother? Monroe's over. It's a done deal. And the worst that I hear all the time is we're getting out. They talk about packing up, they talk about selling homes and getting out. They see no future for Monroe. There's a lack of economic confidence also, as evidenced by our less than thriving downtown. And it all stems from the same notion that it's over for Monroe. It's just a matter of time. Why not? I hear it over and over again. This doesn't have to be. This proposed separation will put the town of Monroe on an equal footing to many of the surrounding and neighboring towns. Towns like Warwick, Goshen, all which are attracting businesses um, and have a positive economic environment. It's not present in Monroe, and it's all because people fear the future. Um, the, the town of Monroe needs to be free from control of the town government without the electoral dominance by one village within the town, a village which may have differing goals in zoning or economic development. There are those in the audience I've heard and those on the stage who have publicly stated that they opposed this because they didn't like the process. To you, I'm asking that you put that aside and instead focus on the substance of the agreement. If your objection to the process was that it wasn't public, all the more reason to vote yes. Approval means moving this on to a very public process, debate, airing all sides of the issues. What could be more democratic and open than a voter referendum? And this is what we're asking you to do. 
don't kill this agreement in the name of transparency, and in doing so, deny the people in Monroe the right to vote and decide their own future. Others have raised very important environmental issues that really aren't germane to this hearing. The water issue is an issue, has been an issue. This doesn't change it. This really doesn't change anything about that. All right? Um, Monroe is my hometown. I guess all I'm saying is give Monroe a chance. Vote well, yes, please. is Patrick Davis, followed by Sonia Mason. I'm Tom Kemnitz from Monroe. I'm chairman of the Monroe Democratic Committee. And Pat Frost, as chairman of the Monroe Democratic Committee, I'm here tonight. Um, at our last meeting, we unanimously passed a resolution that begins, we believe that the very essence of democracy is the right of people to choose the government under which they live. And we go on to ask you to vote in favor of giving the citizens of Monroe the right to decide on this issue. Um, and one of the problems that we've faced in Monroe, it's a political problem, is that we have two groups that don't trust each other and don't um, agree on many things. And that divide has been used by people who are less than fully scrupulous for their own ends. And uh, as an example of this, we now have a town judge who's been indicted by the Department of Justice and arrested by the FBI for a variety of offenses that she never would have been able to run in a, in a town that's not divided the way the world is. Uh, and we went on to urge all parties in the town and the county to find common ground to end the cycle of litigation that has beset us in recent years. But again, we ask you to let us decide. Thank you. My name is Pat Davis, and I'm here today not only as a candidate for county executive, but as a resident of the town of Monroe to urge the county legislature to give me and my neighbors the opportunity to be in control of our own destiny. I'm also calling on us as a community to look at this as an opportunity for a better future. I would like to thank the Orange County Legislature for convening the public hearing this evening, and I'm encouraged by all the folks that have come out tonight to voice their opinion and respectfully listen to their neighbors' opinions. This is an important part of how our democracy works. For years, mistrust has plagued the relationship between the various village of Curious Joel and the town of Monroe. Throughout my career in the military and in business, I've been driven to follow the sounds of the battle, provide leadership, and collaborate with others to identify solutions rather than ignore the most urgent problems. For that reason, I commend the efforts of the parties involved in demonstrating leadership and arriving at a compromise. We must consider this to be an opportunity to look towards the future for publicly elected officials, particularly the county executive, to exercise leadership, to hear the voices of everyone impacted, to get everyone a seat at the table, get the facts, and lead us towards an improved future. We have to recognize that the creation of the new town will by no means be a perfect solution. Approval of this measure will result in years of continued negotiations regarding the details of implementation. This must not happen behind closed doors. Through an open process, we need to resolve a range of outstanding issues between elected leaders of Orange County, Town of Monroe, Curious Joel, and all impacted municipalities. Therefore, my continued support is contingent upon meeting one condition. The interests of all Orange County citizens must be represented and prioritized. We have to acknowledge the immense complexity of the situation 
and not let it paralyze us into inaction or force us to continue with what is not working. We are running out of time to act before the situation becomes untenable. What is the alternative? Continuing with the broken status quo? I don't think so. Let's take steps now to create a better future for our community. Our children are depending on us. Let Monroe vote. Following Sonia Mason is Kevin Rowdy, followed by Karen Deller. My name is Sonia Mason, and I represent the New York, New Jersey Trail Conference. I understand the reason for the proposal of the Town of Palm Tree. People need space to live. However, they've forgotten two very important things in the meantime. Two long-distance trails, the Long Park, and the Highlands Trail. They're actually rather big deal trails. They're both listed on the New York's open space plan. The 358-mile, 70-year-old Long Park connects one of the greatest cities in the world, well, probably in the world, New York, with the largest preserved park in the country, the Adirondacks. The 150-mile-long Highlands Trail gives people access from the Delaware River all the way through to the Hudson River, taking on some of its most scenic land. Along the way, they connect several state parks, municipal parks, private preserves, and one national park. Both of these trails co-align at this point because there's nowhere else for them to go. This is the last green corridor. Everywhere else around them is developed. Seven Springs Road for many years used to be an unpaved, rural, and very pleasant walk, a wooded walk. Have you seen the land? It's gorgeous. It's, it's an amenity to the community, and I know many of you enjoy the trails. I've seen some of you. It brings in, they bring in good things for the county. The New York Space Open Plan endorses these trails and protected corridors for them. The land around Gonzaga Park is developed, and therefore this is the only space left. The parcels north and south of Seven Springs Road can be made contiguous with, or at least north of, of Seven Springs can be made contiguous to Gonzaga Park. A green corridor can be created. Otherwise, what will happen to these trails? So for the last 70 years, volunteers of the trail conference, land trusts, and state park partners have been working hard to preserve greenways for these trails, many of which would not even, the parks would not even exist without them. And there are many good reasons why the Open Space Plan endorses greenways and green corridors across the state for people's health and enjoyment, for wildlife, for aesthetic reasons, great property values. So how are we going to protect these trails? Please go ahead and vote whichever way you vote, but please, make a provision for these trails, create a green protected space for them, a corridor. Extend from the Gonzales Park all the way to Museum Village Road. But remember there's a generation who cuts two high profile trails in half, but leave a legacy to be proud of. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Kevin Ravi, I'm a 25 year resident of Bloomington Grove, and I own a small business in Washington Grove. I love my town and our county. I am also a founding member of Preserve Bloomington Grove. We are here tonight to support the United Monroe, but also the residents of Curious Joel in their quest for stability in the town of Monroe. No agreement is perfect, but this agreement is the right one today. I urge all legislators to vote yes when the time comes. I would also strongly advise this body and all the candidates sitting in the audience, including Mr. Newhouse and Mr. Davis, to develop a countywide plan for this issue. It's not going away. I may be naive, but I believe through long-term planning, a long-term plan can be created through hard work, understanding, and a willingness to make concessions for the greater good. You have a lot of work in front of you. I wish you the best of luck. The follow by Veronica Connolly. Good evening. Thank you for uh, 
allowing us to speak tonight. My name is Karen Dower. I am a resident of Tuxedo, and my children attend the Monroe Woodbury School District. I have no voice in this vote. I am not saying that I don't want the vote to happen. What I am saying is that it is impacting a larger group who have no voice. I think that there is a rush to judgment here, and I believe that there should be a delay or a, some sort of informational time period so that, uh, uh, gosh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> so that we can collect more facts, and especially since Mrs. Rodriguez has said tonight that they don't have all the facts. I don't know how my taxes my school taxes are going to be affected by this vote. I need to know that information before I can condone this happening. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Roy Kalmus, and I live in the town of Blue Grove. However, my address is a Monroe address. My neighbor up the road is in the town of Monroe. All three of my boys went to Monroe Woodbury. I have a son who lives in the town of Monroe and grandchildren who go to Monroe Woodbury School. So even though I may not have a vote in this, I'm definitely involved in this. I also own two businesses, one in Chester and one in Monroe. I've got many, many clients who live in the Monroe area, and a lot of them are concerned about whether or not they can stay here, especially those who are nearing retirement. I think it's very important that the homeowners and business owners give Monroe and the, and the village of KJ a chance to separate. Back in 2013, the village of KJ put in, the current, the town board members at that time were put in by a vote which was almost 100% out of KJ. I think it was something like almost 7,000 votes to six. Outside of KJ was just the reverse. So you can see what the problem is. It's almost like us versus them type of thing. In 2015, that town board, which was put in by the village of KJ, voted in favor of this 164-acre annexation. In actuality, I was at a meeting when that town board allocated $200,000 to an independent consulting firm to try and help determine if that was a good thing for them to do or not. That consulting firm felt that there wasn't enough information and wanted them to vote no. However, they still voted yes. And the reason is simple. They were controlled by KJ. The big problem is what happens if the towns do not separate? Within a few years, many of the 14, 15, 16, and 17 year olds in KJ will be voters. And the village of KJ registered voters will outnumber all the rest of the voters in the town of Monroe. They will have the ability to put five Hasidic men on the town board or five proxies to do what they want anyway. At that point, they'll be able to take over the planning board and eventually the zoning board. You will wind up having high density housing in many other areas of Monroe. That's where your problem really begins because at that point, They'll be living all throughout the town. They'll be voting in Monroe Woodbury School District elections. And the value of our homes will absolutely deteriorate. And as far as the other municipalities go, it would be much better for them to have a strong ally in the town of Monroe than an enemy. I urge you, please allow the people of Monroe to make this decision. Thank you. educating the folks of our town, as well as across the county. 
we've been placed in a situation with an issue that didn't start just five years ago, but began 40 years ago. Unfortunately, it's our generation that is left holding the proverbial bag to try and figure out how to best meet the needs of one town with two very stark and contrasting ways in which to pursue life, liberty, and happiness. We are all guaranteed under the Declaration of Independence. In 40 years, nothing different has ever been done to find a mutual agreement amongst the Monroe residents who live, very, uh, who live side by side but are very worlds apart. How many lawsuits can be drawn? How many hours can be spent debating the same old issues? How much more can we in Monroe or the county take when leaders like Harley Doles want this animosity to continue for his power and gain? Monroe and Orange County will be better served when people like Harley Doles can never come to power again. There have never been any viable solutions to try to come to a resolution between the two communities, and here we are with an opportunity to try something new and allow the Monroe residents to finally have an actual voice to choose what's best for their future. If we don't at least offer the opportunity for the residents of Monroe to vote on a referendum for separation, you are taking any possibility for a different approach to these conflicts to be even considered. Can we predict the future? And no, the obvious answer is no. But what I do know for a fact is Monroe the way it sits now and having this constant battle is 100% not working for anyone, including the county. I live by an affirmation that states, if it's not working for you, what can you do to change it? Well, here we are, and now I ask you 21 legislators, Monroe is not working for us anymore. What can you do to change that? And the answer is vote yes for a separation referendum. Thank you. The next speaker is Kate Amati, followed by Michelle Willier. I'm not sure if I have pronounced her last name correctly. Kate Amity, Town of Dooling Road. I speak, can you hear me? I speak generally for the protection of Scunamuck Mountain and its ridge, and specifically for continued protection of Gonzaga Park, an Orange County Park connected to the Long Path. On the border just outside of the proposed town of Palm Tree, it's the green area on the map in the front there is the entrance to the park. Gonzaga is in a unique position to serve the public, all the public. A park built more recently on Lock and Drive in the world, Riyak Hafin, admits only KJ residents. The park is open three when large commercial buses arrive to 7.30 p.m. weekdays and Sunday afternoons. An entrance sign mentions that non-residents are free to use other parks, which are listed. Mysteriously, Gonzaga is omitted admitted from that list. Also mysteriously, the large sign inside Gonzaga has disappeared. Gonzaga is very small. In two directions, paths are marked closed. Gonzaga has already had a very complicated history. It was the home of the novitiate of St. Andrew on Hudson since the 20s and of Jesuits since the 70s. Then the Recap Housing Fund Development Company. The state took it over in 1995. In 2004, the state turned Gonzaga over to the county as a public park. Opened in 2012, it is closed during the winter. The deed for this transaction specifies as follows. This grant is made and accepted upon the condition that said premises shall be improved and maintained for park, recreation, and playground purposes. In the event that said premises are not improved and maintained for said purposes, the title hereby conveyed shall revert to the people of the state of New York, and the Attorney General may institute an action in the Supreme Court for a judgment declaring a revesting of such title in the state. <coughs> Several picturesque structures and some fencing remain. 
There is a large fenced playing field marked field permit, field use by permit only, and a large lighted parking lot, as well as two portable, portable toilets. There were several picnic tables. The glory of the park is a small pond, home of dragonflies, where occasionally people fish. During the five or so years it has been operating as an Orange County park, it has developed into a lovely, well-maintained community park. On or near borders between KJ, Woodbury, South Bloomingfield, and Monroe, it welcomes all. Young Hasidic men and others have for many years hiked Skyrimont Mountain Ridge from the park, greeting each other peacefully as we hikers do. The ball field is used by Monroe St. Brendan's Gaelic Football Club, Hasidim, and others. Passive recreation park activities such as nature education, picnicking, fishing, walking, hiking, birding, meditation, and praying go on. Laura Fernandez, followed by Deborah Berenger. Hi, uh, my name is Laura, and I moved to Monroe in August of 2012. My sister has lived in Orange County for over 30 years, and I was excited to have a home built near her in this beautiful area. I wanted to leave the congestion of New Jersey and give my daughter the wonderful education this school system has to offer. Within a month of moving here, I was told to like a Facebook page called Save the Monroe Movie Theater. The rest is history. I have been a United Monroe supporter and volunteer ever since. After five years of attending fundraisers, walking in marches, and helping to run endless political campaigns, there is finally a light at the end of the tunnel. We are so close to electing a town board in Monroe that wants what the people of Monroe want. Separating from KJ is the next step. I would love nothing more than to see my eight-year-old daughter graduate from Monroe Woodbury High School at the age of 18. Please help us gain our political freedom, protect our school district, and progress as a town, as I am sure all the towns you represent have been able to do over the years. Please let the people of Monroe decide our fate. Let us vote for the separation in November. Thank you. Hello, my name is Deborah Barringer, and um, I just want to give you a little background on my life. My parents moved here in 1974. I was two. This is the only town that I know. Um, we grew up with five kids in our family, and we loved the school so much. We played all the sports, and when it was time for my husband and I to settle down, we knew that Monroe was the perfect town for us to live in. This town means everything to us. It's a friendly town. Our kids are in sports. The schools are amazing. I have four children in four different schools in Monroe Woodbury, and there's no other district I would want to send them to. I started going to meetings and getting involved when I saw all the corruption in Monroe. I didn't realize growing up that this had been going on for so long, but in the last five years, I saw what happened with our town board. It actually made me run for village board, and I'm now a trustee on the, the village of Monroe board. When someone said before that KJ, it's not right if you make them their own town, they already are their own town. I can't live there. It's only KJ residents. The only difference is they control our town board. And I don't think you realize how much this has affected everybody in our town. The county too, but for us. You're our legislators and we're counting on you. You know what the right thing to do is. Put yourself in our shoes, what would you want? We're not asking you to, to separate, we're asking you to give us the opportunity to vote. A yes vote is the only answer. The Monroe Woodbury School District is an amazing district. It offers phenomenal sports programs, music programs. It was actually voted best music community seven years in a row. And the academics are phenomenal. Voting yes will allow the district to maintain its excellent reputation without the fear of programs being cut or the Board of Ed being influenced by the special interest of Black vote. We know we don't want to become the next East Ramapo. 
A yes vote will allow the citizens of Monroe to have fair representation, something we don't currently have and we haven't had for years. Please vote yes. You know it's the right thing to do. All you have to do is say yes, let us vote. We're not saying you're the deciding factor, but you're the deciding factor to let us decide our future. I'm not going anywhere. I want to see my daughter graduate, just like Laura. She's in first grade. I would never uproot my family, but you're making it really difficult for us, and, and we need you to vote yes for us. Thank you. Robin Klaus, followed by Ward Brown. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, I live here in Woodbury. Um, I agree with some of the comments that were made. Some of my, my thoughts were already covered. Um, one that wasn't though was the $164,000 question, shall we say? Hundreds of thousands of dollars have already been spent on the lawsuit involving seven communities plus the county. So I don't really understand how the legislature can consider a vote until that lawsuit is determined, one way or the other. There are a lot of unanswered questions still. Uh, data is still coming into you. So I would only ask you to wait, take a step back, collect all the data that is necessary for all concerned before you render a decision. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Ward Brower, a private citizen. And by the way, I was born in Tuxedo, so I'm probably more a native than most of them. That's when they still have a hospital. I've seen a lot of changes in that time, with the comment of some of the people in the audience. Uh, Labor Day would arrive, uh, the summer people would leave, and the cows would outnumber the people. This was the, I was in this very room the first full season, so I know that's a long time. However, in all my 70-some years, this is the most bizarre political scenario I've ever seen. And we're rushing in to make a deal, and time is of the essence. We need to step back and examine all the facts. I've heard a lot of gross innuendos and half-truths tonight. First of all, we do have an unconstitutional village that wants to become an unconstitutional town. That's bizarre. Then it's negotiated by an unelected, un self-serving group of non-professionals. I raised that question at a town board meeting. One of the leaders from the United Monroe said, they had to take the job on because the town board refused to do it. The problem with that scenario is a bit disingenuous. Since 2015, they have controlled three of the five seats on that board, which means they control the board. If they wanted the town board to negotiate, they would have done it. In fact, at every meeting since the town of North Monroe has gotten to the public view, on the agenda would appear the town of North Monroe. And there are three puppets, some people call them stooges, but I'll be polite. Take it off the agenda. They don't want you to know. They want to keep you in the dark and let that mushroom to show. UN, I was a member of UN 2013. It had a good purpose. Organize the non-religious people into their own block vote versus the religious party. That election didn't do too, do too well. We lost. 2015, they had a change in strategy, strategy but they never involved to, never involved to inform anybody. They cut a deal with the Democratic Alliance. By the way, that is the second most powerful Dem we, uh, religious block vote in our town, if not the town. They got 2,500 votes. From that point on, their mission had changed. The mission was, up to that point, was our own block vote versus the religious block vote. Unsustainable growth is bad. After 2015, uh, growth is good, provided that the people vote for it.
Thank you. After Lorraine McNeil, it will be Janice Anunza, Anunzia, followed by Valerie Hunter. Town of Lake Road, Town of Monroe. On September 8th, 2015, four people decided the future of Monroe. Harley Doles and his town board approved Curious Joel's 164 acre annexation. Just two months later, 40 voters passed the annexation in a special election. That's 44 people determined the future of my town. This September 7th, that's almost two years to the day, there will be a similar decision. You, the Orange County Legislature, will decide to either allow or not allow a referendum on the issue of Curious Joel separation. But this time, if you allow it, all 20,000 voters in Monroe would get to vote on the future of our town. Think about that. 14 of you vote yes, the people of Monroe decide. If just eight of you vote no, you will have decided. Monroe needs 14 of you to vote yes. If you do, it doesn't mean that you approve KJ separation. It doesn't mean that you're giving Curious Joel anything. It simply means that you are giving the people of Monroe the opportunity to decide democratically the future of their own town. If 14 of you allow a referendum, the people of Monroe can vote for freedom from the Curious Joel block vote, they can vote for sanity in local government, and they can vote for the beginning of sensible and equitable relations with neighboring communities. Only eight no votes would disallow a referendum. If so, the people of Monroe will receive none of those opportunities. If so, a handful of people will once again have decided the future of Monroe. A decision by eight of you against the referendum will tie Monroe to Curious Joel forever. The KJ block will outnumber the rest of the voters in Monroe in three years. That means all the planning and zoning decisions will be made by those voted in by the block. Now I know that you face county issues of, of environment, water, sewer, and infrastructure. I'm an environmentalist myself. I'm a good steward to my land. I don't use chemicals. I care for the habitats. However, all of those issues will be here on September 8th, whether you vote yes or whether you deny the people of Monroe the chance for a referendum. I ask you to cast your yes vote for the one question that is before you, and that is, will the people of Monroe vote in a referendum that will decide the future of their town? I'm also going to ask you to please put aside whatever political differences that you have and do what's right for the people of Monroe. Please allow a referendum on the issue of curious Joel separation. Please let us vote, and please let us decide our own destiny. And I want to say one thing to Ward Brower, the outright lie about our organization. It was never about religion. It was about fair and equal government for all. This is not a religious issue. This is a political issue. Thank you. However, the legislature must look at this in its entire context and not just one piece. This is a matter that will have ramifications outside of the borders of Monroe, neighboring municipalities, some with lawsuits pending, the county, and also the region. And all you have to do is think about the Ramapo River. Um, it should not be left to the voters of Monroe to decide to correct the political situation within the borders of their own municipality to the detriment of their neighbors. This creation of a new town is only a temporary stopgap measure and does not address the issues, nor does it help curb the environmentally unsustainable practices that have been engaged to this date. 
This premise of a new town formation, and it's been said before, but I want to reiterate because it's extremely important. This premise of a new town formation and with coterminous school district orders is contrary to case law in New York State. It is also contrary to the New York State Constitution and the United States Constitution. And this is an illegal village, an illegal school district, attempting to form an illegal town. The United States ensures freedom of religion through the First Amendment, protecting government from religion and religion from government. But it does, but it does not protect those who seek to form their own religious governments within the U.S., whether it's a village, a town district, a school district, a town, whatever. And the intention of this is clearly laid out in their um, petition exhibit D. And it's, it's basically establishing the fact that this is going to be creating a religious municipality. The legislature should not decide in a vacuum. You must not be guided by political reasons. And you must not let a village with a history of environmental infractions create a new town until some of these environmental issues have been addressed. The Orange County Legislature must decide within the interest of the county, not just Monroe. And most seriously, the Orange County Legislature must not act contrary to the governing documents of New York State and the United States. You must vote no on this petition and stop it now. sit in the front row, there's plenty of open seats there. If you don't like each other, you can leave a seat in between. <laughs> also, I just want to say before you start, man, I'm sorry. Uh, if you speak tonight, you will not be allowed to speak tomorrow night. So keep that in mind if you want to speak tonight and, and you're not going to make it tomorrow night. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Janice Annunziata. My husband, Frank, and I have lived in Blooming Road for over 25 years. Uh, while we don't oppose development, it has to be planned, vetted, and inclusive. We supported United Monroe initially and financially, but we grew very alarmed when they entered their secret negotiations. We're informed by representatives and attorneys that palm tree will cause irreparable harm to Blooming Grove and many other communities, including Woodbury, Cornwall, Chester, Washingtonville, and Tuxedo, just to start. KJ is now wooing Woodbury to begin the secret negotiations with them. All of the affected towns, along with the environmental groups and our elected officials, must stand together or we will fall one by one until only the Hasid remain. We request our legislatures please pay attention to all of us. Vote no if palm trees will harm adjacent towns. Instead, slow down. Take the time to get the answers you need in order to come up with a plan that identifies and finds acceptable solutions for all impacted communities in our beautiful county. We well, have many, many reasons for your consideration. Woodbury will be left unprotected from annexation. Blooming Grove will be left unprotected from annexation. And the new shared boundary with Palm Tree will make annexation possible. Eight municipalities and the county itself are all parties to a KJ annexation challenge lawsuit pending in our appellate courts. We will be rendered moot by this agreement. The municipalities and the county involved in that lawsuit will lose a huge leverage we now have our lawsuit. You are likely to create a very bad annexation precedent. KJ ignores health and safety codes, environmental laws, and enforcement is minimal. Sewer needs are not addressed. The Herman plants are already at full capacity. Who will pay for that additional stress? Water supplies are already challenged to the breaking point. Blooming Grove has water shortages. KJ isn't even online yet. As they annex lands that exempt from tax, our taxes will increase and become unbearable. Somehow, the Hasids continue to receive special treatment. They flaunt laws, they poison water and land. Favoring one religious group at the expense of others is unconstitutional and must be stopped in order to maintain separation of church and state. Rockville County tactics of blockbusting through intimidation have taken place in Southeast Orange. I'm alarmed to hear Hasid's at large as 250 homes in South Blooming Grove. Marijuana's already a lost word, perhaps preparing for future annexations in Blooming Grove. Non-KJ residents are forced to flee their neighborhoods and those who remain see their properties decline. Blooming Grove, Cornwall, Woodbury, Washington, we all have no voice. We and you as our representatives need to know more than what we are presently being told. Traffic will increase dramatically. Sprawl will stress infrastructure and services, increasing pollution, reducing quality of our air and our water, and the quality of life that we all cherish. Zoning must be enforced or put into place to protect and expand our open green spaces, curb unrestricted development, and slow down or even prevent multi-unit dwellings. Uh, thank you.
Valerie Hunter. Okay. I'm going to call Donna Henry, followed by Anissa Lamb, Dory Hall, and Iris Compass. I'm Donna Henry, Monroe resident. Um, when I first moved here in 2013, um, I became aware of these issues at hand, um, shockingly. Um, I've been a long supporter of United Monroe. Um, they're a very hardworking group. Um, their efforts have brought us this far, which may or may not be as far as we'll ever get. Having said that, I do not know if this is the best course of action. I honestly don't. It may be. It may be not. The problem is we do not have all of the information that we need. By rushing this through, what we'll have in the referendum is a vote that will pass. That is because the vested interests of the two groups and an alliance will form a block vote and it will go through. This will not give anyone the time that they need to get the information that they need to make an informed decision. I don't see why this has to be rushed through. If it's a good decision, it can wait. It can wait until all of the people in the town of Monroe have the information that they need to make an informed decision and vote accordingly. A referendum in November will go through. So your decision now will actually determine whether or not the separation goes through. Because if you don't slow this ground, trim down, there's only one way it's going. So I beg you, Please just put the brakes on this. It may turn out as the best thing for everybody, but it's happening too fast and with not enough information. Thank you. Hi, my name is Anissa Long. I'm from the town of Monroe. I've been at Monroe resident for eight years and I've seen a lot more and more bitterness and anger in this town. I just don't think that this is the way to live. And um, I felt bullied every time I go to vote. Every season we, vote, we have a block vote. And I, we, our vote is basically the non-KJ residents are not heard, okay? If we're talking about constitutional rights, what is my right when I always have to fight against a block vote? Right? And also, just in response to a person who just said that, I remember the alliance group had, in the beginning of this uh, session has hired a lawyer to say no, to ask you guys to say no to put the things on referendum. So I don't think that the, you know, there is oppositions out there. So, and also, a lot of the issues about environmental are the same. Whether we have a separate time or not, we have to deal with those issues. So what it means is it's not an incremental factor to consider whether you allow us to vote, you know, on this referendum. It's not an incremental factor, okay? It doesn't suddenly pop up when I say that we need a separate town, okay? So, just to conclude, I am asking you to allow us to put these issues on the ballot because until it's put on the ballot, People don't care and they don't spend time to find out the information. We can talk to the cow, you know, saying that we need more information. No, once it is on the ballot, people will find out they will start talking. And that's where the education comes into the picture. So I'm asking you to allow us, the Monroe residents, to vote on our own future. Thank you. Hello, my name is Dory Wong, and I am a resident of the town of Monroe, and I am also the mother of five 
fantastic children. Three of those children are currently in the Monroe Woodbury Central School District, and two of them won't enter until September of 2018. I am begging you on behalf of my husband, my children, and me to please let Monroe decide what happens to us. The actions or inactions of past governments that have gotten us to this place are not working. We see it in the news. We see it in Lakewood, we see it in East Brown and Poe, and now we see it in Mama. We have an opportunity, and in this way I call upon you as the first people with the opportunity to change this story. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing but expecting different results. The same old, same old will not work. We have an opportunity to change this story. We have an opportunity to change the headlines. We have an opportunity to make this better for not only us, for not only Monroe, but for the future of our county. So please, I beg you, let me decide. Let my husband decide what happens to the town of Monroe. Thank you. My name is Iris Conf, and I've been a resident of Tanner Monroe since 1998. And I just would like to ask you to please let us decide on our future. Thank you. Margaret Kasdan, Alice Alley, Christina Faisal, and James Kelly. and I moved to Monroe almost 20 years ago from New York City. And in that time, I've enjoyed the beauty of Monroe, but I've also seen the negative impact of the block vote. Um, I'm asking you to vote to give me the opportunity to choose the future of the town and by all means deal with environmental issues and constitutional issues about the religious community, but let us separate and move forward without the block group. Thank you. Oh, hello. Uh, my name is Alice Alley. I live in the village of Harriman. I moved here about maybe 11 years ago from New York City. I fell in love with the area. Um, beautiful, uh, beautiful area, and but I shortly found myself in a very strange land, um, uh, an area that's not represented by elected representatives. Uh, I'm asking you, our legislator, to please vote yes, put the referendum on the ballot, let us, the people in the town of Monroe, have an opportunity to vote for our future, um, it will be good for Monroe, pray that it will be good for Monroe and um, be good for the rest of the county. Thank you. Hi, my name is Christina Kiesel. I'm a 21-year resident of the town of Monroe. And I'm here today to implore the legislators of Orange County to vote yes on placing a referendum on the ballot in November. As an active and longtime volunteer in my community, I have been greatly encouraged by the outpouring of support for the separation from the public. I believe it's because of the diligence and perseverance of volunteers from United Monroe and Preserve Hudson Valley that we're now experiencing an awareness of our local politics like never before. Regardless of our individual politic ideologies, there's a common ground we can all agree on, maintaining the natural beauty of our town 
the value of our homes, and the quality of our children's education in the Monroe Woodbury School District. We finally have the opportunity to break free from the stranglehold of an ever-expanding voting bloc on our town government. With this separation, the town of Monroe and the village of Curious Joel, we have a real solution to a tug of war over control of our destiny that's waged on for 30 to 40 years. With this separation, we can finally ensure that our zoning is enforced, residential neighborhoods re remain as such, and our tax dollars provide a top-notch education to our children. This separation must now be decided upon by the people of Monroe. The only way that can happen is with the support of our county legislators. So I ask you, please allow the residents of Monroe to decide their future by placing a town separation referendum on November's ballot. Thank you. Jim Kelly, the town of Monroe. Uh, I want to thank the gentlemen and ladies for coming here tonight to listen and show democracy that does work in some places, even probably the only place in the county. Uh, I wasn't going to, I didn't bring any paper with me tonight because I didn't think I was just going to say support United Monroe and their view on this issue. But I listened to a lot of people, a lot of different people, and none of us seem to, well, I think the pros and cons are very important for everybody. I think we should all, you know, have our opinions heard, and I think it's very important to have it heard. But also, I think that we, the reality of uh, the, uh, uh, the, we brought up the expense to the town and how much it's going to cost us. How much is it costing Orange County in lawyer fees and in town and row lawyer fees and each of the villages in lawyer fees? You know, you want to know what everything is about, but let's find out how much it's actually cost us. In the last 40 years, people come up, I've been here 30 years, I've been here 40 years, that's great, but this didn't happen yesterday. It didn't happen five years ago. It's not something that you can blame the Karis Joel. They're, out to, they're a community, they're different than us. I, you know, I go to the gym every day, a lot of times, there's people from Karis Joel in there, I mean, we have to work together to get this done. And United Row is the first group that was able to communicate with that and bring it to the table. And now we have an open communication with Karis Joel, and we're going to say, well, we don't really need that. That's not important. We don't really need it. I, I just ask you, Jim, let the people of Row decide what they want to do for their own community. Because if you don't, you'll live with it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to introduce Legislator Roseanne Sullivan, who represents Paul Kellen Crocker. Town's up. And Superintendent Midney can get put an AC in the capital plan. Just kidding. Let's go, Steve. Thank you. Lou Medina, followed by Tom Kellen Crocker. Bruce Chichester. And Mayor Jane Purcell. Good evening. My name is Lou Medina. I'm a resident of the town of Monroe. I've lived here for 33 years. And I just wanted to say that I believe, and I know that you all know this, KJ is not a new phenomenon. They've been around for many years. We have all been dealing with this situation for many years. Not much of anything has been done in that time to address the situation that we knew we were coming to. We're here now. We need to make a change. I respect everyone's opinion to oppose a vote. I'm asking that you vote yes. Give us the chance to decide for ourselves. I understand the reason why people are saying no and why I carry that opinion. And I would love to be able to wait another 40 years, but we don't have that time. I personally believe we don't have until November. Because if this goes down, I believe our town board will change forever. We will not have a control of our own town board where I live. We will not have control of our zoning board. 
when we live please give us the chance to decide our future and our own destiny thank you I was a member of the uh, um, uh, Citizens Committee in Blooming Grove. We got the ward system passed. Now I'm a member of Preserve Blooming Grove. And let me begin by saying that at first I was dead set against this settlement. I hadn't read it, and I have my own issues with the leadership of Curious Joel. As a Jew myself, I resent the picture they have painted, resulting in many people grouping us all, including all of us into one basket. I know that many people object to what is apparently an issue about the separation between church or religion and state, and I absolutely agree. However, let's not lose sight of the goal here. If and when this town is formed, and we must remember that it is a public town, and any gates should be eliminated, they cannot really legitimately tell you what to wear or where to go, uh, and that is not being held. What, what, we really, what would really happen to the town of Monroe residents? It will be determined in the, in the next few years because the population of Curious Joel, as we all know, multiplies by 6% every single year. So they will overwhelm the voters in the rest of the town. Whether it be the government or the educational boards, they will control it. The fact that the Orange County leadership, and I'm sorry, but the Orange County leadership has not enforced the rules for KJ that they expect everyone else to abide by, that's something that has got to change. The dead boy policy, our possibilities, the sewage plant capacity, the pollution of the Ramapo has got to be addressed and in a very forceful manner from Orange County as well as from Albany. That has nothing to do with the town separating. That has to be done whether they separate or not. Add to that, I want to, I don't want to lose my 10 minutes. Add to that, the discriminatory the discriminatory I'm sorry, your, your 10 minutes is done with all this friend. sorry. No, I can't. You, can, you can leave your written comments, though. You're what? welcome to go. You're past your three minutes now. Thank okay. you. Good evening. I am Bruce Chichester, current village of Harriman, current village of Harriman trustee and former mayor and deputy mayor. I've been an elected official dating back to the mid-80s. Throughout the years, I have interacted with various Orange County executives, Orange County legislatures, and town and village of Monroe boards. Over these years, I have witnessed Orange County basically disregard certain rules for Kiris Joel. I have never seen Orange County enforce the required Section 239 that requires municipalities to send major planning decisions to Goshen for county planning review for a Kiris Joel proposed development. In other words, for over 30 years, Orange County has has left dealing with our neighboring village to the town of Monroe and its other two villages. Unquestionably, I was pleased when Orange County joined the local municipalities, but they followed. They never took the lead. So, why now this Orange County assessment of what's best for us? It's the local municipalities that over these years have looked to preserve the environment, protect the lifestyle, challenge exorbitant annexation attempts, and negotiate agreements, not Orange County and all of this at our taxpayer expense. With this history in mind, I implore you to delegate the decision of potentially establishing the new town of Palm Tree to town of Monroe voters who on a daily basis live with and know of the pros and cons of this major decision. I do understand that a majority of Orange County legislators' districts are distant from the town of Monroe. Therefore, the daily local happenings escape them. Similar to administrating Orange County Sewer District Number 1, a majority of officials elected outside of our area cannot have the same concern and or understanding that a local voting public has on a daily basis. I conclude with a plea to the entire Orange County Legislature. Allow the town of Monroe voting residents to decide this issue, which will certainly have a far-reaching effect on all of their futures. I thank you for your time and attention.
Good evening, all. Thank you, uh, Chairman Brescia, County uh, Attorney, and the County Legislators uh, here today to listen to all the views and concerns of the public here in Monroe and throughout Orange County and make my short sweet. Uh, first, at this time, uh, I feel a proposal for the creation of a new town is a step in the right direction. But there are still concerning issues that though need to be dealt with. Those issues are future annexations in the surrounding community, Orange County Sewer District Number One and its future build out, future manage, management and cost of the future rate payers. Water, surrounding water supplies from local municipalities and compliance with following the 239 review, which is very serious. We as municipalities have to follow it all the time, and there's a certain community that doesn't even want to follow it. It has to be held to a standard like we are. These are just a few, <coughs> these need to be taken seriously. The track record of the village of Kyrgyz Joel at times is suspect. The situation that we're in is not just a Monroe issue, but a county issue too. We must think regionally for the future of Monroe and all in Orange County. Thank you for your time. Okay, we have Phil Gagler, followed by Leonard Hernandez, followed by Margaret Farrell Faisano, and Mary Bingham. Um, hi, uh, my name is Phil Gagler. I'm a 14 year resident of Monroe. Um, Orange County has been at odds with the village of Curious Joel for decades. Unfortunately, very little has been done by our Orange County, by Orange County to ease the tensions. In Monroe, there has been an enormous imbalance of fair and equal representation by Monroe's town board for very many years. This now is an opportunity for Monroe and Curious Joel to part political ways. It's been a long time coming and we will help ease tensions and form an opportunity for us to make peace with our neighbors. New York is a home rule state. Local governments and home rule states are free to pass laws and ordinances as they see fit to further their operations. Who is more qualified to decide the future of Monroe and Curious Joel than the residents of the town of Monroe and the village of Curious Joel? No one. Now is an opportunity to put aside your political differences and do the right things for the citizens of Monroe. I ask you, the legislative body, to vote yes to allow Monroe's residents to decide our own future. Thank you. Residents of the Town Monroe will do their own diligent research into all the factors that are involved. 
report to them and then make an educated decision when they go to vote on the referendum when it appears on the November 7th ballot. Having re referendum items on the November ballot is not a new or unique idea. Monroe voters are used to seeing referendums on the November ballot as it is how Monroe voters decide on their library budget. In addition, this November, all New York voters will see a referendum for a constitutional convention. Referendums are a way to ensure residents have a say in their government. Many times I have, I have heard it said, New York is a home rule state. What better way for the legislature of Orange County to prove this statement true than by voting yes and allowing the referendum for the formation of the new town of Palm Tree and its separation from the town of Monroe to appear on the November 7th ballot. Thank you. Okay, we have Richard Colin, um, Tony Cardone, Peter Suey, and Donald Siebel. Good evening, everybody. My name is Rick Colon. I stand, I sit on the town board of Monroe. <clears throat> I've been a resident of Monroe since 1981. A lot of talk has gone on and references made to the Nazis taking over the Sudetenland, the Battle of Britain. It is not that story. It is a question of the townspeople of Monroe getting the right of determination. What could be more democratic than that? People talk about having a seat at the table. Well, I would like to thank Preserve Hudson Valley and United Monroe for standing up and taking this issue to the people. The other issues that must be decided, will be decided, not only by the townspeople of Monroe, but also, I think that the county will have a lot to say about that later on, about sewer, water, who's getting what. These things, issues are very important to the town of Monroe. We have to have the choice. We have to have our own determination. I ask you to let the people of, in, of Monroe to stand and vote as they see fit. Thank you. Chairman Gresher, county legislators, First, I'd like to thank you for your service and for being here this evening. I know it's an extra meeting for you, and it takes time out of your daily life. I've been a resident in the town of Monroe for 47 years. My grandparents had a summer home up here from the late 40s, and that's what led my parents to move us out of the boroughs and up to Monroe. For years, the village of Monroe, the village of Harriman, and the town of Monroe have lacked total independence. Independence needed to allow our residents, schools, and businesses to have the opportunity to prosper without the obstacles of politics and a block vote. Political dynamics that do not represent the major majority of the town residents. It is evident that tonight's meeting is crucial to the future success of Monroe. And it is also evident that without United Monroe Preserve Hudson Valley, we probably would not be sitting here tonight. I will simply ask, when making your decision on the new town's referendum, that you consider the residents of Monroe, their needs, and their need for independence. And that's not to say that I am disrespecting the surrounding communities. I do understand the values associated with sewer and water, but that's your responsibility the way I see it. And you still have that responsibility whether you give the town of Monroe the ability to vote or not. The residents of Monroe need their independence. We need to be able to govern our town without the oversight of political posturing, which, is, which it has been for the last 40 years. Allow the residents of the town of Monroe to determine their fate. Again, I respectfully 
and I respectfully ask that you give the voters the opportunity to vote on this referendum. Thank you for your time, and thank you for your service to our county. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for coming, and the legislators, too. I appreciate your, uh, my opportunity to speak tonight. My name is Peter Tui, uh, 50 plus year resident of the town of Monroe. Um, <clears throat> for large, most of the majority of the time, uh, you know, there was never any discussion of, of uh, the future of KJ. I mean, everybody kind of knew that we'd get, they're, growing, they're going to grow fast and they're going to outgrow things. But it was just kind of kicked down the road, the can, kicking the can down the road. Um, on behalf of anybody speaking up, there never really was until this group came along, Emily and John and uh, Preserve Hudson Valley. And, you know, regardless of who came and stepped up, the fact is that they did come and step up. And the thing is that, um, you know, through their discussions, the negotiations, compromise, I mean, those are basic things of how anything in life gets done. Um, their efforts, I would hate to see go um, unnoticed and, uh, and fall by the wayside. I strongly feel it, it should be a, a town of Monroe residents who ultimately decide this for, uh, for our own residents and for Monroe and Curious Joel. And for that, I respectfully ask you all for a yes vote to bring the referendum to our ballot in November. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Sibo Newberry, a uh, lot's been said tonight. There's too much to add other than uh, this is certainly premature. But I look back and I say to myself, the decision was made 40 years ago when the village, when the town of Monroe elected officials created an illegal village because they did not conform to the right, proper law. They didn't have the inhabitants. Nobody challenged it. The county legislator, the, plan, the county planning department, nobody challenged this a little creation of a village. You didn't do it. You got stuck with this now because there's something in front of you. But the decision was made. Now, if I lived in my room, I'd be up here saying, do it, do it, do it. But this was done. And that hasn't been brought up. There's also the issue of, unfortunately, the horse is out of the barn and it's 10 miles down the road. But there's been public statements over the years that they were going to create 200 homes a year. That was 15 years ago. And they were going to grow at 6% incrementally. And there was a, a letter from some resident of Monroe who did the numbers and did the math and he never disputed it. And he, he predicted the numbers today. Well, what are the numbers in 20 years from now, 30 years from now? What legacy do you want to leave? Because you didn't create this, you're just stuck with this bag. Okay? And that's all I have to say. Thank you. We have Carol Maluli, Matt Higgins, Neil Dwyer, Jerry McQueen, and Nadia Waldman. Carol Maloney, Central Valley, lived here over 40 years. And um, I know that uh, Monroe United and uh, Preserve the Hudson Valley has worked tirelessly, raised money from all over the county. So they got a lot of support. But I'm a little disappointed that when push came to show and it got down to the brass wire, they kind of left everybody else out of the loop. So for that, I say that the county legislator should really try to help represent us and think about, before you allow the vote, that are we represented? Did we get represented in this process? And I'm not saying that the process was flawed. I'm just saying that they're picking the can 
to Woodbury. And maybe they're taking the can to other towns. So I'm asking you to preserve Woodbury because they have Monroe United. So with that said, um, that's all I have to say really is that I ask you to represent Woodbury and maybe some other towns that weren't included in this process. And I also think that um, maybe my elected officials would be down here speaking what I'm saying and would have wanted to have been included in the process, but I think we're in a lawsuit with Curious Joe, so our, their hands are tied also. So with that said, don't kick the can down the road before you include everybody, because I'm in the Monroe Woodbury School District and I pay those taxes. So I feel as though Woodbury and anybody that's in, that's in the Monroe Woodbury School District should definitely have some input. And it should all be done in some sort of public forum. Thank you. Good evening, Jen Brescher and, and Orange County Legislators. Good evening and welcome to our presentation. My name is Neil Dwyer. I'm a trustee here in the village of Monroe, and I thank you for the opportunity to address you this evening. By the actions, I'd like to start off by saying, by the actions of United Monroe and Preserve Hudson Valley, we have this very opportunity this evening. That opportunity wasn't there a month ago, it's here now. And I'd like to clearly state that, that's important to know, and I, I think you folks know that. The sole question you have, pro or con, that's before you is whether to allow the residents an opportunity to, to decide on their futures. One only needs to look at the current state of affairs to see the glaring problems. A no vote continues the course of business currently in place, politically and otherwise. There will be no altering of behavior. A no vote will not only change, will not change any future development from within KJ or outside. A no vote will not change any preservation of resources. A no vote will continue with business as usual, using the block vote to put political agendas favorable to one community over another. A yes vote will allow us the opportunity to decide our future. A yes vote will allow us to have this peace that we hope to have between the communities broadly throughout the county that haven't been seen for many years. Politics has been the governor in place. A yes vote will allow the chance for families in the town to enjoy the social, athletic, and educational opportunities, the reasons they, the very reasons they came here, without the anxiety and the stress that comes with uncertainty, which comes from fears expressed on different social platforms, in meetings, and in supermarkets. Or for the residents, the chance to address the quality of life in Monroe, so that they, and for many generations forward, we'll have the opportunity to enjoy it. Thank you. Mr. McQuaid? <laughs> okay, Jeremy. thank you for your time tonight, Orange County legislators. It's a serious business you have to decide. Uh, I'm a town board member. I was one of the guys that voted along with Councilman Cologne, uh, Supervisor Dole, and Councilman Burke for 160 Planet Station. I still stand by that decision. I understand, you know, I don't trust them like they don't trust me. United Monroe was trying to do something. A separation has a, a ring to it. It has a little bit of something that you would, you would like to see maybe down the road. But what's been gone on here with the backroom deals and backroom negotiations, we don't have all the information. We have none of the impacts. Uh, we were criticized for the annexation because we didn't have enough further 30, 40, 50 year impacts. Right now we have almost no impacts on the study. If it goes on the yes vote for the county, there will not be any studies done by the town of Monroe. The town board members, Cardone, McGinn, and Cologne, table it every time it comes up. They won't even let uh, the, the evil Harley Dolls or Jeremy McQuaid talk about it. So the public will not be given any information. So you have to do the stuff. It's on your table. Because once it goes past you, it's going to be pushed through by three block votes. KJ, KJ Alliance, and UM. It's over. 
and the public will not get any information. Now that's, that's a big problem. Backroom deals, no accountability, not visible. Things like the UN promised us they were gonna do. I was to protect Monroe when I ran first. We were supposed to be protected by UN against the onslaught of the cages. I understand the theory of the balance of power. But when you do everything behind closed doors and you take the KJ Alliance block vote in your back pocket, win two elections over it, and you're gonna win another one with it, and they've already made a deal with the village of KJ not to vote the election, so they guarantee the victory. This is all politics. This is what it comes down to. Uh, a complete 180 by UN against the uh, KJ block vote. Now it's okay. KJ unconstitutional theocracy. UN said that all the time. But hey, let's reward them with their own town. KJ, serial environmental offender by UN. Nothing addresses this here. UN elected officials on the board said we have no idea what's going on in negotiations. Plausible deniability for the election. That's what that is. 220 acres, 56 more than annexation. UN says it's okay. Let's get a big glass of Kool-Aid and say it's fine. 56 more acres, right? 162, we took 162 away. Those 162 acres are all KJ Alliance. They're gonna vote for UN, that's why it was taken away. It wasn't taken away to make a deal to lower the amount. It was to make sure that the block votes they want are in the town and the ones they don't want are out of the town. 162 acres, the same group were guaranteed by Gadali Zegan and the KJ administration that they would get sewer and water. Who's gonna pay for the sewer and water? The rest of the non residents, not KJ. Politics, county exec. He owes KJ block votes, it's payback time, and he's pushing for it. Election in November, he's pushing for it. Four more years, another election, more payback. Watch what the county executive pushes for. I don't trust career politicians any more than anyone else does. Okay, Assemblyman Scoopas, I don't know what he's gonna to say tonight when he speaks, but he always said not one more inch, not one more town. Okay? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Please help us, that guy is on the town board. Please. <laughs> resident for 25 years. Um, to the residents of Woodbury complaining they didn't have a voice, these negotiations were not secret. They were in the papers. Anyone would have demanded a seat to the table, just like UM did. But your town representatives, representatives didn't. Preserve Hudson Valley is also in a lawsuit with KJ. That didn't stop Preserve Hudson Valley and UM. What stopped your town? People can have all the concerns about water and sewer and the environment. Separation will not change any of that, and it won't prevent anyone from fighting that. If we do not separate, all 13,000 acres of Monroe land will be KJ controlled. Imagine water and sewer issues which will arise from all 13,000 acres of Monroe being high density housing. Sorry, I hear public speaking. Um, KJ will. KJ will control the town board forever in two years time. The numbers don't lie. 56 acres of separation versus 13,000 acres of KJ control land. The school district and the town of Monroe will be taken over if we do not separate. Vote yes to allow the people of Monroe to decide. Let us decide our own destiny. So I'd like to thank everyone for coming, for coming out tonight. Everything seemed to go calmly. We were, the legislature was a little bit apprehensive having viewed a few videos from this area in the past. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, everybody seemed to be calm, respectful tonight, um, and spoke passionately about their viewpoints. And it probably helped that we had six or seven sheriff's dep deputies here tonight to keep it calm. But uh, I hope we'll have the same, uh, the same uh, type of the, uh, atmosphere tomorrow night in Karis Joel, and I welcome you to come back tomorrow night at 6.30 if you haven't spoken, or if you have spoken, come to listen. Uh, thank you, and without further ado, I'll uh, entertain a motion to declare the, uh, we'll declare the public hearing adjourned until tomorrow night. Where do you park tomorrow? Where do you park? I don't have the answer for that. Is Michael Amo, do you have the answer? Oh, 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 hang on one second, one second. We'll continue tomorrow. The resident, they're asking where they park tomorrow. Is there plenty of parking there? There's, there's 100 parking spots, so try to carpool if you can. Please. Thank you.